Hey there, welcome to Silversmithing 102. This class is all about safety. And there's the obvious ways you can hurt yourself and the less obvious ones. And I'm gonna be covering both of those in this class. Okay, first up, we obviously have our torch. It's very hot, don't touch it. That's pretty obvious. The next thing you wanna remember is that anything that you're touching with this flame is also going to get really hot. And that includes the, the soldering tweezers. Now these ones are specially designed, let me turn this off here real fast. Whenever you're not using a torch, you should turn it off. Some people like to leave them lit. I don't think that's a good idea. They're, these are designed so that there's a heat sink near the end, but these parts can still get pretty hot if you are soldering a large piece. The other more difficult to see danger is that when you're soldering here, very dangerous vapors are going to come off of your solder. And so you want to invest in some kind of fume extraction. So I'm using this fume extractor, which is rated for soldering fumes. It has two ports on the top. One of them leads over to my plating system for when I am doing plating. And I have these adjustable arms and I can open and close this when I'm not using it. And the other one leads over here to the soldering area. So I can push this directly over my work. I can position it over my crock pot where I have my pickle and other so on and so forth. So that's something to keep in mind. If you don't have the money to invest in this, you're going to want to invest in some sort of hood or a fan, some way to pull the fumes away from you and uh, either capture them in a filter or have them exit the building. All right, so the next thing still related to heat is heat buildup in your metal. This can happen when you're polishing a ring on a uh, polishing arbor. They can get ridiculously hot, and that's actually how I've burned myself more times than any other is with a hot ring that I've been polishing. And I might have been touching it with my gloves. Uh, I usually use leather finger cuffs, which I'll show you here. These are pretty inexpensive, and they just go over the tip of your finger and they can provide some protection. Um, and so when you're polishing a, a ring, either on an arbor like this, or one like this, it generates a very large amount of heat and will actually get the ring hot enough to burn you. So it's always a good idea to uh, wear some sort of protective material, um, or you can use ring clamps like this, uh, but I like the tactile feeling of being able to hold the item in my fingers. Okay, so the next item, which should be pretty obvious here, also relates to your lungs, and you really need to watch out for airborne particulates in the silversmithing and goldsmithing world. And as you can see behind me here, I have uh, this arbor here, and it has polishing wheels on both ends, and so I actually have these dust collectors uh, set for both sides and they have filters in them which try to change regularly. So as soon as the filter gets to the point where it's dirty and it's uh, no longer letting air pass through, you're gonna go ahead and, and clean out the filter and go ahead and save, save the stuff that comes out of the filter here. Uh, you wanna go ahead and save all the stuff here. This is full of silver shavings and whatnot, but you definitely wanna capture all the dust in places like this and this. This one also has a filter in the back of it when this machine runs. It generates a lot of wind in here. Most of it gets sucked back, but a lot of it comes forward, which is why I also wear a mask a lot of the time, especially if I'm working with those arbors. Well, the dust collection on those is pretty darn good. It's not 100%, and no dust collector really is. So if you have access to masks like this, I highly suggest you wear them. The masks also don't catch 100%, but between the mask and your air collection system, you are gonna eliminate most of that stuff from getting into your lungs. And that's a hidden danger in silversmithing and that over long periods of time, you can develop illnesses related to uh, breathing in these nasty dusts. So please take care of yourself, get good dust collection, get masks and so on. Okay, this is a hammer. This is a hammer. This is a hammer. Um, I'm not going to go into this a whole lot other than the fact that uh, you will 
and I guarantee you will hit your fingers with these. Uh, try not to. That's the end of the hammer safety talk. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, I can't believe I almost left out two of the more important safety aspects, which I'm going to cover right now. Eye protection and hearing protection. They're so obvious that I almost glazed over these. So I'm going to go over those real quick. All right, so these are so everyday. A lot of you probably already have a pair of safety glasses. That's obvious. And you might have a pair of earmuffs. These can be um, come to the hardware store, real simple. If you find that you're doing a lot of time at the soldering table, it can be a heavy strain on your eyes to be looking at that flame. So a pair of these is really handy. They're not as dark as welding goggles, but they are going to block a lot of the harsher light. So that's really handy to have, especially if you start working in platinum. And a lot of my tools even have built-in flaps here like this one, which I can see through, which I really like. And even says right here, always wear eye protection if you flip up the shield. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And another type of eye protection is eye strain. If you're going to be looking over something and you want some detail, get some way to magnify things. This right here is a double purpose. It has eye protection, illumination, and magnification. And there's other things you can get as well. This is an optivizer and I'll cover magnification in another video, but for now, something like this is a great tool to have because it's going to both protect your eyes and provide some magnification. You can also get lights that go along with these, although I don't have one. Okay. The last item I have for today are these gloves here. I use these biodegradable nitrile exam gloves and I get the powder free ones. And this sort of stuff is really great because in the there is a fair amount of chemicals and other things you're going to get exposed to every single day and these things can just build up and build up and build up and while you may not notice much after just a few days of working around something uh, you might notice after years of it so it's kind of like the air filters um, just put some gloves on if you're going to be working around anything toxic uh, this would include things like uh, if, you're, if you're changing out the uh, the acid in your pickle pot or if you're working with plating solutions um, if you're doing anything with any kind of acids or corrosive metals or materials uh, then just you put on a pair of gloves and that'll save you a big headache down the road okay so that's really all i have for safety it's it's pretty much a common sense type of thing you know I keep some band-aids in the shop and I pretty regularly cut myself and burn myself and smack my fingers with hammers, although not nearly as often now as I did when I was starting out because I've learned how not to do a lot of those things. And a lot of it is just control when you're using the different tools, trying to make sure things don't slip, that sort of thing. So that's all I have for that. If I have other things that come up, I will address them in future videos as they come up. My next video, I'm going to be talking about the basic tools you will need to get started doing the first few tutorials. The first tutorial is simply going to be making a simple ring. And so I'm going to show the tools you will need to make that, as well as a few other basic tools you'll want to have in the shop. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.